host, Erica Saldo, the Queen of the Tea. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. This is a whole hour again and again and again. Put your hands together. I've sat up our teen athletes. And all those people and businesses that support those teen athletes. Hey, hey, what do you say, Dr. D? Talk to Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm lost. What month is this? I don't know. It's what? October? It's like, I feel like Please. June. It feels like June. Oh, are you serious? Oh, it is way full. I, I, I just hot, hot celebrated hot. New Year's 2012. Seriously. I mean... Really? Because you, you live up in the mountains. It I must do. be horrible. Oh, gee. Is what? it bad? By the way, I'm not real uh, happy with Ben Franklin and his whole daylight saving time thing. Yeah. Could we just have the same time year round? Man. It like, doesn't matter anymore. I, I know agree. why they did it. It was for economic reasons. Right. So that the shops could stay open. Exactly. But well, since we're twenty we're, trillion dollars in debt, I mean, who cares? But we're we that's what have I said, the internet right? that's it on twenty four seven. What if Republican <laughs> or Democrat? I'm not going there. Look, Andrew's hitting me. Angela Miller Bevin, Fairview Gardens. Hey. What? Hi, everybody. Is, is it good for the fruit or bad for the fruit? I don't I, know. You know. Does the fruit care? That is a very good farm question. Oh, and <laughs> um, I know the chickens didn't care. It does have yeah. the, the it's it has to do with the weather, the time, the way things are done. It's, it's if you read the almanac, right. you would learn more about this. The the almanac? What is almanac? The farmer's the almanac. almanac. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so funny. Google it, folks. Google it. Google it. So talk to me. How is it coming? Because what, what day is today? D, you always have to tell me what day it is. Ah, uh, one, two, three, four. Four? Four. Uh, oh, four. Ten fo. It's ten fo. October it's four. Ten fo. I love that. Yeah. All right, so, it can't be. Okay. Yeah, it is. You know what? All that day. it's that's why this past weekend we all were spending our whole weekend pulling down all of our Halloween decorations, correct? Mhm. Decorating yeah. your house. I actually pull mine up from the basement so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but also and if you want to come out to the farm, there's pumpkins out at the farm. So, oh, nice. if you need to get a pumpkin, come to Fairview Gardens. They're not cooked pumpkins. <laughs> um, no, we're at the farm. <laughs> really? We're growing them, but not cooking them. Do you have a quaunted house there on, on Halloween? <laughs> no, we don't. No, you don't do that? They, That's a good idea. Since you're like the, uh, I bet you could raise money. I think he, that would be a really cool thing. I think you should do it. You got time. I, Go for it. I have a lot of time. But you know, <laughs> I it. have to say is that we, I am also on, I'm also with other organizations in Santa Barbara, hmm. and I have been with some organizations that have had haunted houses before. And? Would and that organization on? would be the Carriage and Western Museum, yeah. which they had. I have Pete George I here with me today. Woo! Pete George I, the okay. voice of Bishop Diego High School. I call him one take. Like there's only been two people <laughs> on the planet two. in five years. Probably a hundred commercials. Uh, Victoria he, he and, and sourdough, the sen- sourdough bread lady. That's like the only two people. <laughs> she did it in, in one take. In one she did take. It in one take. I know. Terry Coop is going to say bow to that because I think they worked on it for two or three days. But I know <laughs> Pete George. He's a busy guy because he travels a lot, you know, because he's semi retired. And uh, what he's doing what is basically that? is I think he's going to make. You want to you add to yep. that, Pete, at any time? Well, you know, <laughs> <and> time. <laughs> Can you get in there to speak? Because yeah, okay, I want to ma- let you know that Pete, Pete, Pete is mic. actually the president of the Carriage and Western Museum, also a bishop alum nice. and a father of some bishop alums, too. Yep. Nice. And I brought with me Brandon Gama today, and he's the golf coach at Bishop Diego, and I was real pleased to turn the program over to him after I retired uh, 10 years as the coach with Marty Herrera. Nice. And Brandon's here today to tell us a little bit about the golf program. Let's go back to the Carriage House. Seriously, right. do you have a haunted house there on all? We've had it in the past, and yeah. it, uh, it was a monumental event yeah. and uh, we had about 5,000 visitors Whoop. and it was a big fundraiser but it was so much work we never did it again Aha! Uh-huh. but also Pete's favorite job at the haunted house was he would stand behind things and jump out and scare people no 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 <laughs> tell him about St. Rayfield's the best thing he ever did I mean he really I mean the kids are in second grade are still getting night terrors do you want to say what you used to do at St. Rayfield's well, we, had the, the uh, we, had, uh, we had some uh, grade school kids come in for a tour at the the carriage museum on Halloween, right. and uh, we put somebody in the hearse. That's and, um, yes, you did. And then at the precise moment, they scared the heck out of the kids, and every kid ran running out of the building screaming. So, Ooh, it, very scary. Awesome. Kids. Did you know that I'm a therapist, and most of those children are now with me? <laughs> so That's thank good. You, thank, thank you for messing Absolutely. <laughs> we do our best. Absolutely. All right, Pete George. Woo! Yeah. Thank Woo. You. John Calder, she's back. You had an owie, but you're all better now. 
I am better. I'm still in recovery. There's a bandage on my foot yet, but I've, I'm, I'm doing well. Yeah. I'm doing well. Yeah. Fantastic. I know Dominique will be here later on in the show. We want to talk to you. Talk about what's going, what's belonging to, I'm trying to do be something because you're the well, bee lady. Yeah. Yeah. Native bees. Yeah. I had a, went to a great seminar up in Hopland, California, north with the, with uh, Berkeley University. It was wonderful, wonderful. So nice. I've got some other things to, to talk about the carbon sequestering of in, in soil, which is really, really interesting. I, I love learning. Nice. So. I'm well, sure touch on it because this. you know we have yeah. Fairview Gardens here. I mean, you know, we could always lose yeah. some more learning. Yeah, well, that's soil is great. very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, absolutely. We've learned, I mean, there's a lot to be said. We've Fairview Gardens has been cover cropping over the past few months, and to put more nitrogen in the soil. Mm-hmm. So nice. Soil can be very interesting. Yes, you may ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> she raises her hand. That's so adorable. I don't want to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm airing out here. Um, <laughs> nice. I had heard some time back that we've only got 1% of topsoil left. Is that true? That I've heard that also. Um, I I have read something about that, and that's one of the problems out at Fairview Gardens is that the, the topsoil there isn't very much. So what we've been doing, we've cover cropped, we've redone the soil, and then we also are putting um, fertilizer um, on it. Nice. Cover cropping is where there's about six different plants that you can plant, and what they do is they basically plant it, and they don't completely grow it to harvest anything on it. They grow it so that they can till it back into the soil, and they're plants that have to enrich it, and it has a lot of uh, nitrogen in it, and that's what's missing from the soil because it's been farmed for so many years. Isn't that the role of what they used to refer to as rotating the crops so that you didn't in a manner of speaking, kill off the soil? Because each plant, each different plant, brought something new to the soil. That is, I've heard that also. Um, That's a very good soil question, and um, I've only, I've just learned about this over the last year, so that can be something I can check back with you on and make sure that's what that means. Well, cover crops usually bring in nitrogen from the air and and deposit it in, in the soil, actually through the roots. It's, a, it's an amazing symbiotic thing. You can actually see the nitrogen on when they, you pull the roots out. There's a little bead on the end of the roots. and Little it's nodules. A, a little nodule, mm-hmm. and it's the actual uh, nitrogen. Wow. nitrogen going mm-hmm. into the soil. Wow. Yeah. If you eat it, do you like talk for me like <laughs> No. no, no, that's the helium. Oh, that's whatever. Yeah, that's helium. Oh, whatever. Okay, the queen just wanted to throw out something. I don't know. Dr. Dale Fink is going to cover me. Hey, Dr. Dale Fink tree. Woo! How you doing? I'm doing okay. I love this talk of soil because I think it's easier for people to get healthy eating vegetables that are rich in vitamins, and this is a great place to buy vegetables, vitamins and minerals in Santa Barbara. So it it is. Is. You've got something here to your right. I'm so I always bring something um, interesting from the farm to, we have a farm stand at Fairview Gardens where you can get fresh organic <laughs> produce. <laughs> I'm shaking. Like and I, I, and I bring things to Erica to see if she and knows I, what it is. And I've failed everyone. It's been five years And this years was now. grown locally. I don't know what it is. It right, wasn't but, grown on our farm, but it was grown locally in Santa Barbara. No idea and does anybody know what it is? I think I do. I think Asian pear. It's an Asian Whoa! pear. Very good. Oh, you went a chip clip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Radio chip clip. Here we go. You're like you go to the dentist when you eat oh, the great. Thank Look you. Look at that. Wonderful. Isn't oh. that wonderful? Okay. Yes. Wow. Huh? Oh, sorry. Well, Should we, shouldn't we have given her the Asian oh, pear? Oh, give her the Asian oh, pear. Oh, I thought you better have better. everything. There yeah. you go. She oh, takes the pear and the chip clip. So the yummy. Yeah. Nice. Good, good job. Good. Fantastic. They're like apples that are just a little bit sweeter, different flavor, and a little crunchier. Yes. But really kind of but creamy you don't have at the same there, time. No, no, the they, they're actually grown you in Santa Barbara. That from another farm on the way here. <laughs> but, you right? can, but those are things you can find down at the yeah. farm stand. That oh, we, okay, have cool. a, we have a right. farmer's market type store down nice. on the corner of Fairview and Stowe that right. you can come and buy these items at. All right, we have one more team. Let's put our hands together. We have a new team co-host. Skylar Crombie, here we go. She's going to jump on Mr. Pete George Ice Mike. How you doing, Skylar? 
Good. How are you guys? I'm doing good, huh? How was that drive down here? It was great. Did I call you mommy because you weren't ready when I went to come pick you up. That's yes. okay. I'm just saying. And the funny thing is, is I was up late in get, late getting you. I had to thank my friend Fernando because you know you start the car, the car doesn't start. Oh my! So you have to borrow a car because you lent your other car out. Okay. So then I go and uh, and then I knew I, you know it was I thought it was the battery. So then thank you Fernando. He he jumps me. Okay, not really, but he did. He did. <laughs> I, and Fernando. He was so sweet too. And thank I you. Mean, I know exactly. No, it, it was Terry's friend. No. So then I went, and then I went. All to right, the Fernando. Okay, go for now. <laughs> then I went to the dealership, and then Marcial took me home. Shuttle driver. I have his car. Thank you so much, Marcial. So he, go, he goes when I went to the show. He goes if I need a ride from the show. So I have my own driver. So I'm going to text him. <laughs> and all this came from Perry Fu- Ford. Now I'm not even promoting. You know, and I just got to say that was pretty darn nice. Mm-hmm. They did all that. Go Perry. Ford, I love that. That was very nice. And I want to go and talk to them. I want to have Mr. Pete George. I go down there and thank him for me because you know we could use a little bit more money on Friday night football for Bishop, sure. right? Yeah. yeah. Why not ask them? Because we like them. And guys just so you know, Mr. But Pete George, I does drive a brand new Ford truck. Does he? Oh, I love Pete George. It just gets better and better. It doesn't end. It just goes on and on and on. All right, Skyler, tell me some of the sports. Tell the tell the community. You're just announcing yourself to the world here in Santa Barbara. What sports do you play at Bishop? Um, I used to play, well, do cheer. I played volleyball my freshman year, yes. and I did track for two years, and now I just manage. Now, ooh, I like that. Just manage. That's right. She's the boss girl. All right, <laughs> let's do this. Let's take a break. This is, we've got a big show today, folks. This is Erica Salter, the queen of team. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back. Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Eric Assault of the Queen of Team. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. We have so much show. We're all packed in here. Then, then we're around the corner outside the office. So, uh, Angela. Yes. <laughs> Where else can you find us on Teen Sports Radio? Oh, Facebook. Uh-huh. Um, Instagram. Yes. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh-huh. YouTube, uh-huh. and watch the flashcards. www.teensportradio.com. <laughs> uh, Woo! Oh, that's my girl. <laughs> All right. All right. Who'd you bring? Let's let's get it down. Um, I brought uh, someone else from Bishop, Brandon Gama. He- Woo, Brandon, thank you for showing up today. Hey, nice. everyone. For no, not just to tell you what you do there, right? No. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Just checking. <laughs> Everybody's ducking. Did you go to why. St. Raphael's too? No, I, I went to Mount Carmel, actually. Mount Carmel. Oh, nice. And then Bishop? Yeah, I graduated in 2005. Very Fine. nice. This is a big Bishop family here. I don't know what's happening. Oh, we, we're going to turn that around because we have other schools here, too, as well. All right. I didn't go to Bishop, as you all know. Uh-huh. I'm a Santa Barbara Dawn. There you go. But um, my son... Woo, everybody went- behind you is like <laughs> clapping and cheering. My son went to Bishop, so since we paid the bills, that makes us a Bishop family. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So your golf, your coaching golf, when does the golf season start? Um, it starts in the spring, so we start practicing about January. And uh, I'm going into my fourth year now. I took the program over uh, three years ago when... Coach Pete Georgia and Marty Herrera left. Well, they were my coaches when I was retired. There. Yeah, <laughs> but you know the yeah. best coaches in the history of exactly. Bishop. B- history. Exactly. They took you guys pretty far, didn't they? Didn't you guys did really well? Yeah, individually I did really well. Um, it was a lot of fun. They taught me a lot. So. So now, do you go out there and coach like uh, Mr. Pete George I does? Yeah, I, I, tr- I, I go out there and um, try to teach the kids a lot of the good things that golf has to offer, you know, um, <clears throat> which is courtesy and etiquette and all the things you need in life, and then set up all the matches for them to just have fun. Hmm, that's very interesting, though. Does does he also t- did he also tell you that he's like the youngest, most handsomest uh, pastel presidente of old Spanish days? <laughs> <laughs> no, but a lot of other people have told me that. <laughs> That's a good answer. That, as they exchange currency. That's awesome. Uh, Brandon's done a great job over there. You know, the uh, the school is small in enrollment with 250 kids, and to get some quality golfers that he's attracted, he's done a good job. He's got some very good golfers over there, and and I commend him on the, the program that he's running. Nice. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't have been able to do this without the advice of Peter and Marty. And, uh, you know, the experience that I had with uh, Marty and Pete is something that 
I want to continue to give back to the kids, which is why I'm doing it. So, like, hole-in-ones, have you had any? Yeah, I've had a hole-in-one. Yeah. One of my players had a hole-in-one last year in a match, actually. Nice. Yeah, Matthew Pate. Oh, nice. Where? At Rancho San Marcos. Beautiful. Where was your ace? At the Santa Barbara Municipal. Nice. I was at the sixth hole at Piper. Okay. Wow. I know. And it was like one of those things where all I heard screaming because it was in a dead fog. Okay. And actually, my, my husband at the time... Okay, it was we had this gale force winds like breaking to the water and I played off the you know, the the little chick tees or whatever and I just crushed, okay, a six iron and I was aiming it right at the water and it just blew and all of a sudden, we hear bounce, bounce, and I hear one guy screaming, and it went on in. I'm like, because, you know, I figured, like, oh, yeah, it went in the ocean. Because <laughs> body goes, oh, left, more left, trust me, trust me. I go, oh, my God, I need faith. And it went in. It was great. And it was like back in that day, because it was a long time ago, I mean, they really made a big deal of it, you know, because if you signed up for stuff, I mean, everybody was sending me prizes, and I got it all over my office. It's kind of cool. So you don't forget those things. Oh, that's so it's exciting. really nice. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah, uh-huh, you owe everybody. You got to pay for everybody's steak dinner. <laughs> you owe me this. It's, it's, it's a different world now. You know, before it was a, more of a receive thing. And now it's like, and I don't mind giving. Okay. But it's like, you know, okay. Yeah. Nothing. Like not even. No, yeah. Okay. An expectation, whatever. It's like, oh, steak dinner and, you know, booze and everything else. And 19th hole and all that. Got to pay for everybody. I don't know. So did you have to do that? Um, yeah, yeah, but I only, uh, I only, I only paid for uh, the people in my group. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. So then they really, they, you know, that wasn't right. Then they made me to think that I had to pay for. It took me about three and a half months to pay it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst yeah. moment of my yeah, life. You got taken no. advantage of. <laughs> I was. I, I clearly could see that. I was always. I was in my twenties. It was like thirty years ago. Um, so, how many kids do we have on on the team right now? Uh, right now we have six. Nice. So. That's the any girls? Yeah, is this a male team or are there girls allowed? Well, actually, we just started a girls team. Uh, it's coached by Mike Kano, who's the assistant athletic director. Okay. And but last year we had some girls. I always welcome the girls to come and try out and play um, because there was no girls team. So any girls that wanted to come and play were welcome to come out and and play golf for us. Nice. What? Wasn't this originally? I heard something. I hear things. <laughs> some, something about often. G- yes, <laughs> golf where ladies are forbidden. That that's an an, an acronym. For ladies are not allowed that golf was originally strictly a man's game. You know, I've and heard that. And then they wore those awful plaid pants to keep the women away. <laughs> <laughs> Do when, you have any of those work? plaid pants? <laughs> <laughs> yes. When did it when did it start to be okay for women to play? Um, Do you know? You know, I'm not sure on that. You but, didn't know uh, you were gonna be tested on this show, did you? Yeah. No. You know, no. we all know that's not PC, so uh, <laughs> The women have been playing as long as I have known, but yeah, I've heard that acronym before, and I don't even know if it's really true or yeah. if somebody just came up with it, but you know, maybe a man did invent the game, but you know, women have always been able to play, and huh. a lot of women play the game now, which is great. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Appreciate it. Well, we appreciate everything you do. Can you give a shout out to all your players? Shout out to all my players. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was it. <laughs> That's funny. You want to be a co-host? No, this is all about keep talking. No? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the names. You know their names. Shout out to Matthew Pate. Woo, Matthew Pate. Shout out to Mitch Heller. Mitch. Woo. Shout out to... Uh, That's okay. Derek Streak. <laughs> Um, and then I forget the the rest that are coming on to play to join the team this well, year. Because they're I just starting in January. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That was a good job. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out and we talking really with us. We really you. appreciate what you do. Coaching yeah. is something that is a great thing to do for our community. So the more people that we can get out there coaching these kids and giving them great advice is a great thing for all of us. So Thanks thank for you. having me. Sorry. Thank you. Hey, let's take a short little break, huh? Because we've got so much show and uh, it's so hot. And we need, everyone looks like they need water. Water, right? Water. Water. All right, let's take a break. This is Erica Salda, the Queen of Team. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every every single Tuesday, 9 a.m. 
am. I'm not going to make you do push-ups, Dominique Hackett. <laughs> okay, so where else can you else can you find us? Facebook. Uh-huh. Twitter. Yes. Instagram. Yes. YouTube. Uh-huh. And teensportsradio.com and? and Facebook. No. <laughs> live. <laughs> live. Ah, live. 12.90 a.m. 12.90 Tuesday mornings. Yes, indeed. <laughs> At 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Every single Tuesday. That's a dead giveaway. All right. Uh, I have to say, yes. you make the happiest morning because every time I walk into the show, I think, oh, Gosh, maybe we only have one or two guests. The room is full. I know. You rock. Uh, well, it's not, it, I told you this from day one. It's, it's, I would say since we hit the five-year mark, right, Dee? This, it has, it's a life. Mm-hmm. Teen Sports Radio, it is, it's, it's a being now. It goes on its own. And I try to like, you know, my job is just to keep the flow of energy. But honestly, it's a, a com- 100% buy-in with all of the wonderful business partners that we have and the community that we have and the kids participating. And the beautiful thing is the almost, over $617,000 that goes to all of us and if it wasn't for the kind generosity of Les Carroll thinking up the show and then uh, of course Dr. Richard Dugan uh, producing all of the spots and for those folks out there who don't know what we do is every commercial that you hear are, they're all donated, and all we ask is to give a, a you know what they feel is is fair, a nice donation to their nonprofit, which is linked to our show. Mm-hmm. So basically, it is a direct one hundred percent donation. Has nothing to do like that. We are like we're held. We we it, I call it fundraising, F U N. And I'll never forget when uh, Les Carroll goes, "Oh, this might be FCC violation. You know, raising all this money." I go, "It's fun." Raising. It's not fund because we are for profit. <laughs> so you can't raise money if you're a radio show, but this is fun mm-hmm. raising. And he looked at me and I'll never believe he laughed so hard. And you know, He's Angela knows one of the better. Best. Yeah, like, you know, we're we're a family here and I think um, the community with all of the programs that have sprouted in the last five years, my favorite being the Promise program. Put your hands together for that. I love that. And then everything, uh, feeding thousands and thousands of meals. That's, you know, she, she her face will be on Mount Rushmore one day. Nancy Weiss, huh? Unified schools with all the kids that are being fed. So Santa Barbara's the place. I don't know what that's else to That's an say. awesome program that, yeah. that they're doing everything. with the school system. My, yeah. my nine-year-old is at Roosevelt, and he comes home with a menu that is from, it's breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, supper, that's what they're feeding them at the schools, and these kids are getting these healthy, healthy, lovely meals. That That's nice barbecue chicken yeah. and all kinds. <laughs> oh, my my son's favorite is pozole. <laughs> pozole, it's like That's it's cool. like going to a restaurant. <laughs> it's awesome. It's a great program. This is fantastic. All right. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you, Santa Barbara in the house. Everybody, put your hands together. We got. I'm like, Trish, I'm going to let you say your name again because I... Salvatore. Salvatore! I love that. That is so right of the Mississippi. So what part of the back east are you from? Connecticut. Connecticut. That's like, I used to look out to Connecticut because I was on the North Shore of Long Island, Rocky Point, and I used to love those lights, and I used to be dreaming a lot, a lot. So like, you know, when you're a kid, you know, get me out of here. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew what was on the other side. No, I know. It was you. Were you looking back at Long uh, absolutely. Island? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, looking same at the three stackers over That's there it. in Long Island. That's right. That's right. The lights. Hope they get over here to Connecticut soon. (laughs) It's nice. All right. So, uh, coach, head coach, Santa Barbara High diving team. Holy moly. So, how did you end up over here coaching diving at Santa Barbara High? I transferred. My husband and I transferred here two years ago. I was a dive coach up north in Stockton, California. Nice. And then I wanted to get diving here and just emailed every single high school. I think it's a wonderful sport. I've been diving myself since I was 54. Nice. So just took it up then. and Since 54, since yeah. 1954. No, since I was fi- turned 54. Wow. Yes. Well, I don't yeah. know. Well, I'm shooting to be one of the oldest females to go off a dive board. That's my, that's that's my awesome. goal. You know, but I have competed. But I have some wonderful divers here that, you right. know, have been diving. Michael and has been diving three years. And Carter just started this. He's going into his second year. And this is going into her second year. And Jesse is just starting. But... 
He's uh, so all gung ho. Is, is it the kids that you brought here today? Is that the full team? No, I have more. I have two more varsity divers nice. that are studying, which is a great thing. Beautiful. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. I like that. Yep. No, nice. well, diving, you have to really balance time and studies out. So Santa Barbara, because they're ranked like you know number one in everything, every sport. You guys are like what division? We are number in? one in diving for our league. We oh, have been for the nice. last three. Woo! Yeah. That, wow! How why was I not surprised at that? No, we have, a, well, that was so, also under the direction of Brian Pearson, who was the dive coach last year and the previous year before that. Which is again Santa Barbara Dons. Little <laughs> shout out. <laughs> yeah, of course the Dons nice. rule. The now, diving see, Dons. That's she's what we been, call herself. She's been. Uh, she's been. Diving Diving since she was 54, but I graduated in 84. Right. <laughs> I don't know how that. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Have you ever been gone diving, Joan? Uh, that was a bad attempt. I, I didn't <laughs> worry. I, honestly, I grew up in Wisconsin. We didn't have a pool uh. at school or anywhere near where I grew up. And I didn't learn to swim until I was in college. Wow. wow. In uh. college. Imagine you kids how lucky you are. Uh. So when I met Trish today, I said, how long do you think it would take me to learn how to dive? And I said a week. Really? I could get her off the board within a couple of well, days. Well, I don't, I, I'm not talking about I got about you off board. the board <laughs> flipping the first first day. Wow. So well, it just depends on the individual, their athletic skills, and what they're willing to conquer. It's, well, it, but it's got to be mental, though. But you I can't mean, be It is a big mental heights. game. Yeah. Yes, it is. They're all agreeing. Yes, yeah. it is. Uh, but. I don't even want to go off the board. I just want to stand by the pool and kind of go in head first and not get no water all up my nose. Well, well that's where we going, start. We start adorable. on the edge of the pool. I don't want to get water up my nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It hurts. I've been there. And oh. I have actually... <laughs> you learned in there college. Go, once I did... Uh, jump in and try to dive and I uh, scraped my nose on the bottom of the pool oh. and that was really scary because I <laughs> didn't open my eyes and I knew I was down there oh. <laughs> I broke my Real nose down. in a pool yeah. oh, I've seen it happen I, mean, I love your nose <laughs> <laughs> nice you. nose I've seen it happen yeah. alright so yeah. who you want to let's introduce some of your, your sure. divers sure um, let me get a chair or get somebody up roll here roll over here yeah. roll somebody Anissa, roll on up Anissa. there we go we'll share and That's Michael no, 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 you got it no, no. Let's go. Don't, We're don't, good. Okay. No. Okay. All right. You guys can use this mic right here. All right. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, so I Trish, want. who do we got? This is Jesse. He's starting first time up. He's going to be our JV diver, but he's going to compete for the Jesse. first time this year. Yeah. Just she say had, hey. You, she, you had to learn how to do a flip a day one, Jesse. Is that right? Yeah. Well, kind of just like, I don't know. I just, the other dive coach. Brian Pearson was there, and I kind of just like learned a little the hurdle, the run up to the end of the diving board, and then he's like, "Try front flip." I'm just kind of try to flip, and then back flip, and then still need some work, but it's fun. Nice. So, when you say meters, how many meters is it? Uh, in Southern California, they can compete on one meter and three meter, but mostly yeah. one meter in our league. It's mostly one meter, but we do we do on occasions use three meter. How many feet is it? Three meter is 12 feet. I'm asking them because I'm, I'm never sure. I just go off. <laughs> That's it. Nice. So what's your favorite dive, Jesse? Uh, um, probably just like a front one and a half, which is a, just a front Ooh. flip into a dive. Nice. Yeah, front one and a half into a yeah. dive. Yeah. So, so we have a little club for that. When you make the one and a half, you, you're called in the one and a half club. Nice. So, so how's the how's the like so how many judges and what's the highest score you could get? And then the, the highest score are, would be a ten. Okay, goes to a ten. So we've had a. And eight, we have Michael and Carter have got um, eights before wow. in some of their competitions. So we're shooting for higher than eight on some of them and to make CIF finals this year. Nice. So. Does anyone have any aspirations to be Olympic? College level. College level. We'll start so, for college. Yeah, we'll start at college. Yeah. Carter. <laughs> yeah. Okay, say who you are when you're up there. Uh, I'm Carter Feld. Hey, Carter. Woo! Woo! Yeah. So you're in varsity. What grade are you in? I'm sophomore. Oh, you're a so yeah. but you're on varsity, right? Yep. Ooh, that means you're really good. Okay. So did Lean you grow down. up with a pool? Uh, yeah. I never remember learning how to swim or anything, but I've always just been able to. To do it. Mm -hmm. So before you dove, did you uh, did you like play around, you know, on mats and stuff, gymnastics yeah. or anything like that? I yeah, don't know. I used to do gymnastics as a kid, and I would always just like flip into the pool whenever. Oh, nice. So, just so stuff so I did. no fear. Yeah, basically. Oh, that's awesome. Great. All right. 
You want to go? So wait, your last name's Feld? Yeah. So I think that your uh, older brothers were really good friends with my oldest son, What's Austin Miller. Yep. <laughs> I remember when you were like this big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're all grown up. <laughs> That's, it's sometimes scary when you see these kids grow up that fast. <laughs> so what would you say to your friends to encourage them to come out for the diving team? It's a lot of fun. Basically, all we do in practice is uh, try new things and work on our skills. Can uh, you got the one and a half club? Can you do uh, a double off? I of can do a two and a half. You could do two and a half. Is it possible to do three off of uh, one? I'm going for that this year. You're gonna go for the triple. Yeah. So, ha- is that a, like a common thing or only one? Yeah, guy? I've seen quads off one meter. They're hard but, though. But that's like Olympic level. That's Olympic yeah. level. Okay. Well, so in high school, is there a buzz that you know that this kid from I don't know Buena, he's gonna do the triple and it's a big thing? Yes, is that, it is. So it is a huge thing. It is. If somebody's gonna at high school level, so. yes. Yeah. Do a three or a three and a half, yes. So does anybody, because you're like They would prefer champs. a three and a half. They always like head first entries. Right. So oh, there you set go. of feet first. Huh. So do you have anybody, so do you think that Carter's going to be able to get to a three? I think Carter could actually do a triple, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. She said right on TV, you know, right on the air. It's not yeah. TV, it's radio. Well, he does a two and a half or doubles in three different categories, so right. that's great. What's what skill do you have to master to go from a one and a half to a two to a three? Uh, it really a vision board. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Uh, that has what? a lot to do. With it. To it really does. get it's diving, I have a uh, you board. really have to. Are you making fun? No, I'm not making fun of you. Go ahead. You have to get the hurdle, and that's where you run up to the board and jump off, and that. That's where you have to get your height to get the rotation to spin. You mean the height? You have to jump on the board right, and, mm-hmm. on the up and down yeah. to get the height? Yeah. Has anybody ever used a trampoline on the board? Oh, uh, no. no. That's dangerous. What they do oh use is a um, harness oh, with, a, and the, with a pulley system. And mm-hmm. some pools have harness pulley systems. And what does that actually that help, do? It helps them to flip and to twist. They'll have a wow. twisting belt. And so that helps them with their entries and getting moving from dry land to the, on the board to a wetland practice. And you don't actually do that when you're, let's say, competing, but it's no. just to assist you in getting that momentum and yes, what it feels and having like an understanding and, and a feeling for the dive and when to come out of the dive and that you're not smacking, as we say. And well, you need yeah. to have a mental. You have to establish a yeah, memory of exactly. it. Your brain, like you know, would there's be a lot of visualization memory. that yeah. goes yeah. along yeah. with yeah. diving. Definitely. Absolutely. What other kind of do you do exercise like push-ups or chin-ups or something to get strong? Um, well, me and Jesse over there are wrestlers, so we do other activities besides just diving exercise. So we do. Uh, and in dive, we also do like hike-ups and uh, tuck-ups tuck ups, yeah. and other various uh, skills that you will eventually transfer from land to the board. So we always have a warm-up period. I think I would need that halter thing to get me off of the of the pool just to start out there. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Let's do this. I'm getting smooshy sides. I'm getting people bug hitting me. All kinds of things. I'm just feeling. All right, all right, all right. I get it. We have to go now. All right. This is Erica Salda. Enjoy the new commercials. Stay tuned for more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Solda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday, 9 a.m. Terry Cooper, where else are we? Oh, we're all over the place. Yeah. I mean, you look for us, and we're there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're on Facebook. Uh-huh. We're on Twitter. Yes. We're on YouTube. Yes. We're on the air, 1290 AM, That's right. every single Tuesday. And we're on teensportsradio.com. Nice. And we're rebroadcast. We, we also are airing 11 o'clock on Tuesday, Sunday at 2, and Terry Cooper's favorite, 3 a.m. on Monday. We'll meet you in the kitchen for a piece of pie no, on the radio. Listen, Slim, no poor pie for you. She just gets a glass of water. 21 pounds. <laughs> I know. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Woo! You're fantastic! As my ex would say, it's like throwing a chair off the Queen Mary, but it's a start. Yeah, but you <laughs> threw him off with the chair. Yes, so I did. So it's all good. Yes, I did. <laughs> he was in the chair that went off the Queen Mary. There I think go. I said that last time, <laughs> didn't right, I? But we forgot him, though. I wanted to add that. All right, so who else we have? Coach. 
Coach in the house. Who we else have we have? Anissa. All right. Ward and Hi. Michael Johnson. Hello. All right. So we're going to get you guys up in front of the mic because there you go. Sorry. All right. So say, always say your name before you speak, okay? And then so ladies first. No, no, no. Okay. That's adorable that you both. No, not here. Ladies okay. first. That's always. All right. My name is Anissa Ward, and I am a sophomore at Santa Barbara High. And I'm also on the dive team. Nice. So, so when did you get started? Um, I started last year as a freshman. I started not really sure about it, but the previous coach, Brian Pearson, was also my health teacher. So he got he interested me in it, and I just loved it ever since. How many girls are on the team? Um, this year, besides me, I think there are going to be two. Yeah, two other ones. Two other ones, so three in total. So We're you're on the same that. team with the guys? Yes, we are all on the same team. That's very cool. Yes. Do you have to train differently as a woman because of different anatomy, or it doesn't matter? It's the same thing. It's a very equal sport. Yes, very equal. That's nice to hear. I don't wrestle like them, but... But you're a dancer and you used to be a gymnast, so... Dancer and a gymnast she used to be, so... So tell me, when you swim, what kind of food sustain you when you get hungry? What kind of snacks do you have? Oh, wow. Um, I love Nature Valley granola bars. Uh-huh. Those are the best. And obviously water, you have to stay hydrated. Right. Because even though you're in a pool, you know, you need to have a lot of water. So those are the main snacks that I have usually. Great, great, great. What's the funnest time you've had uh, in diving? Oh, wow. That's a really good question. I'd have to say just being with my teammates. They like they really like push you through it when you don't want to jump or you don't want to go on the high dive, the three meter board. They really convince you like you can do it, and it's really motivating. Okay, so I have to ask: when you do a dive and it just you hit the water and it just didn't land quite right, and it's kind of a shock to your body. How do you recover real fast? Uh, it doesn't feel too great, but <laughs> when you slap your back, usually. But you just get out of the water, and you just take a couple seconds to just kind of breathe and relax, and then you just... That's not it. actually true. When I did that off the UCSB <laughs> high dive, I was dared, and I did it. I could hear the smack, and I remember clearly yelling, help. Okay, <laughs> really yelling as I, I rolled over, okay, because it hurt so bad I just wanted to cool it in the water. But I clearly remember screaming help, and it was great because everybody dove in and helped me, honestly. And, oh. you know, I didn't float. I just want you to know I sunk. And I think because all the air and everything was out of me, okay. Well, I just got to say, and it was, you know, it was uh, next Tuesday is going to be my 28th anniversary, so I clearly remember it, you know, as a, like a birthday. Actually, yeah, you know, seriously. And uh, to uh, Denise Skinner, who dared me, I'll never forgive you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you kids are brave. Just want to tell you that. You're doing a very brave sport. Okay. Who else we got here? Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. <laughs> right. So, when did you get started? Uh, I, was a, I was a freshman, I think. Cool. Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite part of diving, or what kind of dive do you really enjoy? I like doing a front dive straight, just jumping straight up and curving into the water. It's what we used to call a swan dive. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. How do you how do you avoid water in your mouth, eyes, nose, whatever? I've never really had a problem with that. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Skyler's got a question. What are you going to ask? Um, what's the furthest like dive can you do? Like the two and a half, two, one and a half? I tried a double once oh, a couple wow. times. But you're going to get it this year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's good, though. So who's your favorite person that you like watch their dive over and over again? Oh, Greg Luganis. Yeah. <laughs> the best. Nice. Nice. And are there any like books or uh, biographies about people who've dived that you read? Uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, I bet if I look into it, I'll probably find one. But yeah. What's the highest you've ever dived? What do you mean? Like height from the ground? Uh, just off the three meter, jumping as high as I could. I don't know. Oh. How old were you when you first started in swimming and then progressed? When it started swimming, I was probably like. Five. Okay, and did you try any dives then? No. Oh. I was always scared of that. All right, this one I want. we got a minute left. All right, I want to describe, use an adjective. That's, you know, a word describes a noun. Uh, one word to describe coach. What would you What would you say? Because everybody line up and think of a word because everyone's, we got a minute left. All right, 
Give me a word to describe your coach, uh, Trish. That's the woman to your right. And I don't know if you've got any kind of drills or anything that she's going to make you like do. I don't know, kind of push ups, sit ups. I don't know. So be gentle. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's one big word. Kind. Oh, that's a good oh. word. Oh, that's nice. Good word. All right. Who's up next? Um, Anissa, I'm here. Um, I would say she's really motivating. Motivating? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Because you know they're paid big bucks coaching, let me tell you. <laughs> All right. uh, I think Trish is dedicated. Woo! Oh. Dedicated. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Little kumbaya going on right now. Mm-hmm. I like that. I have a great team. That's it. I think Trish is uh, forgiving. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, what did you do to her car? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Hey, you guys, we've got some parting gifts for you. Please uh, like us on Facebook. If you guys uh, want to come back again, we would love to have you. Bring all your teammates. Tell everybody over at Santa Barbara High, um, Teen Sports Radio. So we've got another break, and uh, we've got a lot more. So this is Erica Salda. Stay tuned. We've got the Dr. Dale Fig Tree in the house right after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salt of the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday, 9 a.m. Skylar, where else can you find us? On Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, on our website, as well as on Facebook. Nice. Beautiful. Right. Thanks. We, we broadcast 11 o'clock at night on Tuesdays after the 9 a.m. show. Also, catch us on Sunday at 2. And, of course, Terry Cooper, Dr. Energy's favorite at 3 a.m. And she's she's getting for that ice pop. Diet pie. <laughs> Diet pie. Diet pie. I love that. Hey, uh, they, I was, this is adorable. And this is the first time this has ever happened in five years, so I cannot say no. Um, the Don's uh, dive, dive team. Team, came back in and they all want to give a shout out to their mommies and daddies. So let's let that, that happen. All right, boys get and ladies, come on up to the mic. Okay, Ma, uh, shout out to you. I love you. Uh, dad, too. Sam, my brother. Nice. Yeah. Woo! Who's up next? Let's go. Say who you are. Uh, I'm Jesse. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. And uh, thanks, Lucia, my sister. You're the best. Oh, nice. Uh, shout out to my mom, Dad, and uh, my coach, Brian Pearson, for wrestling. Uh, you guys always supported me. Nice. Woo, I love it. I love it. I love it. Go dogs. I'm Anissa, and I want to just thank my mom. Love you. And my brother. And I also want to thank and shout out to my dance studio. I love you girls at Linda Vega Dance Studio. Nice. Right. Ooh, like that plug. And then Coach Trish. Yes. Oh. You, you know somebody. <laughs> I know a few. I know a few. <laughs> shout out to my husband, Jim King, and my daughter, nice. Olivia Salvatore King, who got me into diving. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, Trish, honestly, thank you so much for what well, you're doing. Anytime. Anytime. You're welcome. You're welcome. We have a bunch of hams. We so love it. Okay. We, do- we, we dig it. Thank you so much. All right, All right you guys. Woo! Yeah. 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 All right. Dr. Dale Figtree. Oh, absolutely. You tried not to come today, but you got to talk to me. I know, and you're here, and we love you. Thank you. Well, what I wanted to talk to you about today was just carbs, because they have gotten such a bad name, and carbs are actually the most amazing food around. We have to really understand them. It's the carbs that have been destroyed, and they've been taken... All the good stuff has been taken out that are the problem carbs. But carbs themselves are among them just full of vitamins, full of minerals, full of fiber, full of water, the healthiest foods around. So when you hear carbs, they're the energy foods that energize our body. Fats, if we have to use fats for energy, it burns something called ketones, which is poisonous. If we have to use protein for energy, it comes out of our muscles. So it's carbs is a main energy food. It should not have a bad name. But when carbs are refined, everything's taken out of them. So we're talking about sugar. We're talking about white bread. We're talking about pasta and these things aren't poisonous but they're more like once in a while things the really great carbs
carbs that fill your body with energy, with vitamins, with minerals, are the things the closest to the way they're found in nature. So like apples, like this Asian pear is a great example too. Things like carrots, celery, I mean all the vegetables. There's never a vegetable that I met that wasn't just magnificent in its own way. Beans are wonderful. Whole grains are wonderful. Um, You know, it's just most food that's grown is carbs except for avocados and nuts because they're high in fat and protein which is also good so when you're snacking to just go for a carb like an apple cut it up put some peanut butter on it or almond butter and then you have a balanced meal or go through go have some carrots or celery sticks dip them in hummus again you have a balanced meal so when you think of carbs just think wow This is where I can get energy and make sure they're just fresh and wholesome and they haven't just been stripped of all their good stuff. Wow! That was a lot! You killed it! Hey, how can we get a hold of you? You can get a hold of me. um, Well, I have a uh, Facebook, not a, I'm actually, it's a website, which is dalefigtree.com. And my telephone number is uh, 805-563-4904. And I have three books. They're all on Amazon. If you just look up Dale Fig Tree, the books are listed there. Oh, I want to know what they, I want to know the names. Well, the names are, um, one is uh, Eat Smart, Feel Great. And it's a book for kids, parents, and the whole family. Nice. And one is called um, Beyond Cancer Treatment, and it's how to uh, heal and remove the causes that cause cancer. And the last thing is a cookbook called, um, um, I forget. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's called Delicious, Nutritious, and Simple. Nice. Dr. Dale Fitchery, God bless Santa Barbara. See you next week. <laughs> 